candidly about what I regard as the absolute number one issue in the Commonwealth today, and that is the status of our public school system. 305 days. 305 days. That's how long our K-12 public education system has been closed in Fairfax County. Started March 12th with the executive order. It has not been op open for in-person learning a single day since. Now, I have gone through the financial budget. I've seen the money we're spending on hold harmless. I've seen the money we're spending on pay increases. I've seen the money we're spending on school counselors. All of this assumes we have a school system which is open for in-person learning. We do not. Let me give you some statistics. Fairfax County Public Schools lost 9,000 students in the fall semester, 9,000. That's larger than a lot of the school divisions here. It's over 5% of the student population. It would have lost thousands more, but for the fact there's a waiting list to get onto every private school in Fairfax County. And of course, a lot of families can't afford private school. He lost 9,000 students. After the first semester, 10,000 students had at least two Fs in their grades, which was a doubling, over a doubling of what would normally be there. Over two Fs means basically they didn't participate. It's a very good proxy for students that are sim simply checked out of the system. That's 10,000 students. So effectively, we've lost 20,000 students. That's 10% of our student body. That doesn't include all the other students that are basically participating in the most marginal and minimal manner. And we have no way of accounting for them. We have no metrics. Basically, we have abandoned these students for the last 305 days. Now, I recognize that there's gonna be a lot of opinions on this. There's been a lot of talk about it. And I'm not here necessarily to solve it. I have a very strong opinion, and you're gonna know what that opinion is. But let me at least lay out a few principles that we need to talk about as we address the number one issue this session. One, listen to the scientists. Dr. Fauci himself stressed the importance of in-person learning for students. Nearly every single epidemiologist, nearly every single medical professional has examined this issue has said it is imperative to return children to in-person learning. It is unacceptable to keep them indefinitely in remote learning. Number two, let's look at other states. All around us, we see other states where governors are at least making the effort to bring students back to school. California. California, that we seek to emulate in every single piece of public policy, their governor, who is not exactly a raving conservative, has set a goal of getting kids back in school by February 1st. Bill de Blasio of New York had kids back in school this fall. Okay, this is not a Republican-Democrat issue. This is an issue of making an effort. This is an issue about giving a damn. Number three, look at other countries. All the time I've been in the assembly, people come to me and say, we need to be like these other countries. We don't need so many guns. We need more social benefits. We need this. We need that. Almost every other country in the industrial world has kids back in school, except for the United States. Number four, we need a sense of proportionality. Look, we know the toll that's been caused by COVID-19 because of our own beloved Ben Chapin, who's no longer with us. All of us have family members that have been impacted. I've had employees that have been impacted. Uh, my employees' families have been impacted. We've all gone through it. The other day, I was home for a weekend and com communicated with a constituent whose father had died in COVID. And I said, you know, I'm surprised your father was still alive. How old was he? Well, his father was 99 years old. I'm going to say something that's going to be radical. The death of a 99-year-old is not worth closing school for a 9-year-old. Let me repeat that in case the press didn't hear it. The death of a 99-year-old is not worth closing school for a nine-year-old. Okay, we need some proportionality to what's going on. Number five, we need to demand accountability. Now, you could not find someone who's been a bigger beneficiary of K-12 education than myself. My great-grandfather founded Fairfax High School. My, my grandmother fought to integrate the schools. My mom and dad were very active in the schools. I went to Fairfax High School. My daughters went, graduated from Fairfax High School. They got a great education. My son should be playing middle linebacker on the football team, you know? But the bottom line is those schools aren't open 
I'm a proponent of public education, but we just can't throw money at school systems that remain closed. We have to demand accountability. Simply funding each school system like they're open when they're not is basically telling people, don't bother. Don't bother trying to open because we're just going to treat you the same as people that just remain closed. We need to demand accountability with the taxpayers' dollars, not to protect our taxpayers, but to protect our children. Now, I will simply say to this, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of the people here, my colleagues. And I also, I like the Secretary of Education. He and I have talked. He and I met face to face. He's a tough guy. He's a United States Marine. He's also a social studies teacher in middle school. I can't think of two more challenging occupations. It's time for some straight talk, okay? Simply treating all the school systems, oh, you're doing a great job, everyone's working so hard, we're all in this together, bull crap, okay? I just said it. I should have said something different, but let me tell you something. That type of language, just saying everything's fine, everything's okay, we got to get past that. We need to demand accountability. It's us. It's us. It's right here. So, ladies and gentlemen, again, with deference to our new president, and I'm happy, I thought he gave a wonderful speech, my brothers and sisters, please help me in reopening schools. Thank you. Thank the senator. For what purpose is the senior senator from Virginia Beach, Senator D. Steff, rise?